So, I have introduced with uh, adaptive immunity. Now, let's move on to the more precise adaptive immunity. So, before uh, entering in the B cell and T cell, so I would like to explain you antigen. Okay. So, there is a little difference, there is a similar term which we use it uh, for uh, antigen. One, one term is the antigen and another term is immunogen. So, there is a fine difference. It is better to understand uh, those uh, fine differences. Okay. So, there is a uh, the term known as immunogenicity or antigenicity. It is basically derived from the immunogen and antigen. So, immunogen is associated with immunogenicity, antigen is associated with antigenicity. So, what is immunogen? So, immunogen is uh, basically it induces the immune responses such as mainly the production of uh, antibody, okay. That we call it as a immunogen. So, what is antigen? That is an obvious question, right. So, antigen is not necessarily induce the immune response, okay, as such, okay. But it can induce immune responses if it is appropriately modified. So, I will explain you, uh, there is a little fine difference. For example, if you have a rabbit, okay, and uh, if you inject the ova albumin, a protein ova albumin in the rabbit, then that will produce the antibody against ova albumin. Okay. But on another hand, if you inject some very small molecule, for example, uh, aniline, okay, and if you uh, uh, or very small molecule, for example, if you inject, um, uh, say, uh, some uh, uh, some hormone, okay, the hormone which is not produced by the rabbit, if you inject a small molecule, a uh, steroid hormone, okay, then there will be no development of antibody, okay, okay. So now you can understand this is small molecule is is an antigen. It is foreign. It is foreign to the uh, to the rabbit. Okay, you may confuse with uh, uh, this uh, this hormone molecule. Instead of hormone, you can use some molecule which is derived from the bacteria. It is a small molecule, okay, uh, which is similar to the derivative of a uh, uh, steroid molecule, okay. So, if you inject that bacterial origin, that molecule in the rabbit, then there will be a no antibody production. But this is a foreign, right. So, this is an antigen. This is not inducing appropriate immune response or in another word, it is not inducing the antibody production, okay. So, this molecule we categorize as a antigen okay on another hand if you inject the rabbit with ova albumin uh, albumin protein derived from chicken okay then there will be a production of antibody against that molecule okay so that ova is immunogen okay this can induce the uh, appropriate immune response okay but if you modify this molecule, the small steroid molecule which is derived from the bacteria or the hormone molecule which is, uh, which is originated from different uh, 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 animal or different host, okay, then if you modify this molecule or modify means if you attach this molecule with some bulky protein. Then, if you inject it in, in the rabbit, then you can make an antibody against this small molecule, okay. And before modification, this small molecule, we also call it as a heptane, as you can see in this slide. There is a term known as heptane, okay. So, heptane is a basically an antigen, but it cannot induce 
the immune response, the antibody production. Okay, so that's why we call it as a heptane. And there is a one more term uh, known as carrier. Okay, which I will explain you in subsequent slide. So here you can see that heptane. What is heptane? Heptane is a too small molecule. It's the molecular weight is too small. Okay, but it lacks the immunogenicity. It is foreign, but it it cannot induce the immune response. Okay, if the heptane is coupled with uh, some bulky group, as I have explained you, a carrier protein, then th if you inject this this conjugated molecule into the uh, in in into the appropriate host, then you can induce the immune response. Okay. So when you will do this thing, then heptane carrier conjugate. Uh, if you inject this heptane carrier conjugate into the uh, appropriate animal, then there is a development of variety of uh, antibody, and these antibody could be specific against the heptane molecule. This is a one. Another is there will be an antibody which is generated against carrier molecule, the bulky group or the bulky protein. Okay. And the third one is the antibody can be generated against this junctional point, okay, which is uh, uh, which is in between heptane and carrier molecule. Okay, so this carrier and heptane molecule, once uh, it is a uh, uh, it is um, basically injected, then these kind of antibody can be generated. Okay, here this is a very simple schematic. Here you can see that heptane is a too small molecule. Okay, and this too small molecule can not induce the immune response. And if it is attached with the carrier molecule, then there will be a heptane carrier conjugate. And if you inject this heptane carrier conjugate into the animal, then there will be a development of antibodies. Okay, I have another schematic. With that, the things will be far more clear. Here you can see that there is a small molecule, heptane. Okay, and when it is injected, then there will be a no antibody production. Here you can see there is a ELISA. Okay, this is a technique by which you can measure the antibody against your molecule. Okay, your molecule of interest. Okay, but when this heptane is conjugated with uh, this uh, uh, immunogenic carrier molecule, okay, by cross-linking by chemical mean, okay, and if you challenge the animal with uh, this uh, cross-linked molecule, then you can see there will be a very nice production of antibody. Okay, here there is a very uh, simple schematic which you can understand very quickly. There is a carrier molecule which is uh, shown in blue color. And there is a heptane molecule which is shown in uh, red color. Okay, it's a triangular form. And here you can see you can get the antibody against uh, all kind of these uh, surfaces. You can get the antibodies against uh, heptane. You can get the antibodies against carrier molecule. You can get the antibody against uh, both uh, the heptane and carrier molecule. Okay. Now, why I am talking too much about this heptane, why it is so important? So, try to understand this heptane is very important. Particularly, it is, is very much important in order to develop the diagnostics, okay? The estimation of uh, the vitamin, okay, in the sample, in biological sample, how you will estimate uh, the amount of particular uh, a small molecule, for example, it is vitamin, it could be uh, some uh, low molecular weight hormone. So, all these things is possible if you understand this heptane carrier uh, biology. Okay? So, basically, these, these, uh, these diagnostic use the specific antibody against these small molecule and the antibody is basically generated when they are conjugated with some carrier molecule and they play a very important role in diagnostic okay for example estimation of some some uh, um, very low 
लो अमाउंट ऑफ हॉर्मोन ओके लाइक प्रॉब्ली यू मे नो दैट देर इज अ टी थ्री टी फोर टी एस एच ओके टी एस एच इज अ स्टिल बिगर मॉलिक्यूल टी थ्री एंड टी फोर ओके देर इज अ एस्टिमेशन ऑफ सम वाइटामिन फॉर एग्जाम्पल वाइटामिन डी वाइटामिन बी ट्वेल्व ऑल दो थिंग्स आर पॉसिबल बाय दिस काइंड ऑफ केमिस्ट्री एज वेल एज बायोलॉजी और सिंपल इमिनोलॉजी ओके so this heptin biology is uh, very important okay now i will uh, take you uh, or i will uh, demonstrate you that adaptive immunity is highly specific okay by this simple experiment this experiment was uh, basically conducted by landerstein okay carl landerstein in 1962 and the aim of this thing that here you can see at the bottom the specificity of serological reaction so so here you will see the antibody is highly specific okay so what he has done he performed a very simple experiment okay what he has done he conjugated these this organic entities here you can see that this is amino uh, benzene which is aniline okay you know very well if you have studied the chemistry and i am sure you have studied the chemistry okay he also immunized the different group of animal with uh, uh, this ortho amino benzoic acid meta amino benzoic acid and para amino benzoic acid so there are four groups of animal okay and each group received this uh, uh, this uh, particular uh, molecule which is tagged with some carrier molecule okay and then he produced the antibody okay when he produced the antibody he wanted to check the specificity here you can see that the antibody which is produced again that particular species reacted with only that species not with another species okay for example the antibody produced against amino benzene can react with only amino benzene not with ortho amino benzoic acid meta amino benzoic acid or para amino benzoic acid okay this is highly specific okay similarly he performed this uh, experiment he he tested this cross reactivity now the conclusion from this experiment is very beautiful okay if you this is very simple experiment but conclusion is very uh, very interesting okay here there is a very little change in the structure okay and this little change in structure do not cross react with the antibody for example the antibody which is generated against uh, for example ortho amino benzoic acid cannot react with meta amino benzoic acid there is a little very little substantial difference in the structure okay in three dimensional but this three dimensional little change in the structure can distinguished by the antibodies the antibody which is produced against uh, this uh, uh, ortho amino benzoic acid cannot react with uh, either meta amino benzoic acid or para amino benzoic acid or uh, this amino benzene or aniline okay so this this is a very important conclusion that that and that suggests that adaptive immunity is highly specific if you have a uh, some protein okay and if you make some amino acid change and the antibody which is produced against that particular antibody so all antibody will not react with uh, the change protein okay and this is the distinguishing feature Uh, when we are when the individual is infected with uh, uh, different strains of microbe okay so our immune system can recognize okay and this is used by the pathogen okay so pathogen can evade the immunity uh, by making small changes because our immunity is highly specific so once there will be a change in some surface protein then the immune response which is generated against previous strain will be not so useful okay that you have seen in current uh, uh, sars cov 
to infection also there are different variants and all those variants uh, uh, they 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 are not uh, uh, giving a full protection against one particular variant okay and due to this we don't have a very good uh, uh, vaccine against uh, the influenza because this influenza is keep on changing every year and that's why they they evade our immunity very successfully and some of his strains uh, due to making these changes they can uh, they they can be more fatal okay they can cause even death okay so it is very important to keep an eye on these uh, episodes of infection which is happening all over the world and uh, there is a way that we can make a some kind of uh, we can engineer those uh, those changes in one uh, in one pathogen and then we can use it for vaccination okay so this is uh, all about the uh, antigen and in next session i will uh, take you further about the antibodies okay here i am stopping this session and uh, we will see you in next session thank you